Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today we're going to make this animation, which is inspired by the question people asked me a long, long time ago. Uh, at the time, I didn't have much clue about how to do this, uh, simply because I forgot the method. But uh, later on, recently, I just uh, realized, actually the method should be very easy. And let's do this in geometry nodes. So let's start. So firstly, we're going to make an object, which is just to hold the node trees, I'm going to delete this group input and use a square circle to replace it. Uh, for better visualization, I'm going to use the preset, which you can download from the preset library. It's just for visualization, otherwise you'll probably see nothing. It's just a thin orange line, whatever. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, once I have these circles, I'm going to turn that into resolution 4 and you can see these diamonds. I would like to straight that off, so just to use this uh, point mode instead. Uh, if by any chance you would like to change the scale, I do not recommend to touch these values. It's possible, but it's probably too awkward. Instead, I'm just going to use the transform and use the value to control the size as you wish. Okay, so once we deal with these sides, I'm going to in instance a whatever stuff. So let's point instance. I'm going to point instance another curve to a curve circle. Curve circle. Uh, it probably does not really matter with the resolution, but I probably do not like too much. Okay, so once we have done this, uh, I firstly would like to increase the count, but we do not obviously increase the count in this way, otherwise everything will just go back to circle. So I'm going to use curve to points or resample curve, whichever way probably is the same. In this case, and then increase the count. So now we increase the count, but it looks so ugly, so we need a better orientation. So we take a line rotation to vector, and we probably plug the tangents and align with the Z to the rotation. And now we see this kind of picture. Uh, I probably will turn the radius down a little bit and then turn this radius down a little bit so that we can see. Uh, I'm not 100% sure with the default rotation, which seems a little bit interesting, uh, but I probably would like to lock it, but I'm not sure how. Uh, so, I th so let me try if I can lock on x-axis. Usually. So basically the whole issue that uh, occurs with this kind of tangent is sometimes, for example, you have an empty, right? And what this align ruler to vector is doing is that I'm putting a vector, for example, I'm asking this empty to look at the Z axis. Okay, and this empty is looking at the Z axis. But if I duplicate another empty and rotate that along the Z axis, this empty is also looking at the z-axis, but its x, y is oriented in different direction. This is what exactly happens to our curve. So I think uh, the normal way to fix that is probably plug another vector and lock in another axis. I'm not sure if it helps, and it seems working pretty well, because now we have more kind of alignment with all these kind of pointies. Okay, this is awesome. So now we have all these kind of rotations being uniform for our triangles. Next thing is just to rot break up this consistency so that each triangle is, is rotating a little bit. Because at the end, what we try to do is to connect a, sing uh, connect a single uh, vertices, vertices, vertices. Finally, it will be form a, another curve. But uh, if we connect everything in such a stage, then it will just be another square, which is not interesting. Okay, so here, what we are going to do uh, is, I'm not going to put anything into this rotation because once you lock X and Z, you can barely change anything about Y. So instead, I'm going to take a rotation, rotate ULA, and plug that in. Uh, I so you can actually try to look at its rotation, how its rotation has been changed. I don't think in this case, even if it looks like we're rotating the triangle a little bit every time, but I don't think this is correct. So we will prove that as we move further with our helical connection. 
So this node may look a little bit uh, horrible because it contains so many sockets that you need to work with. But uh, in the basic form, you just plug that into the sampling form. Remember to always realize the instance so that at least you have something in the viewport to make you a little bit more comfortable. Next thing is just to take the points into the length, instance into the branch amount, then immediately you have uh, another spline. Ideally speaking, this should be a spiral, actually a straight line, a square, but uh, this is obviously not correct, so which means the x is not correct. So if we try to change y, it's not correct. If, I try, if we try to change z, and you can see this kind of mo movement is what I'm looking for. But I still do not want to use object, I'm using local. Uh, this makes more accurate, whatever. So next thing is just to differentiate this kind of rotation on this y-axis. So we're going to use a preset, which is called a combined Euler rotation. Uh, we can actually use combine XYZ, but uh, its unit is in radius, just like in this form. And radius conversion to degree is 180 to pi. So this, I do not want to do this con conversion, so no. I'm going to use degree, and then plug it a float range. Take the float range, it's a step, and then type uh, maybe 30 degree, not enough, then we increase the amount. Okay, this is looking uh, okay if we increase the count. No, this is not okay, so let's take this 30. Yeah, something like that. Uh, make sure that the start and the end is going too close to each other because we are trying to make it cyclic. Set spline cyclic. Okay, so it's not a perfect, so you can tweak all this kind of value, but I would say I'm satisfied in this case. So knowing several, knowing several settings that we are having, for example, this count, which is important, and this uh, float range is very important. Uh, I think this is about it. Yes. Oh, another thing is our circle, uh, curve circle. Its radius is important. And this is especially important when we're trying to do the morphing next step. There are several ways of morphing. One is to mix our starting straight line condition with our spiral condition that we have formed at this moment. Uh, I, but on the other hand, the other method is just to control this radius. But obviously, we cannot really control this radius. Instead, we are going to use the scale to control so that different instance of our triangle is having different uh, scale, uh, different radius in this method. Okay, so I think these methods by controlling the scale is better because we can directly plug the proximity fourth without doing anything more. And then I'm going to use an empty. Uh, I'm going to claim the other empty. So let's directly plug this fourth into the scale and we can see our effects right away just by moving this empty. And this is yet, uh, there's uh, several things I would like to tweak. For example, the scale of this whole thing. Okay, then move our empty. I would like to discuss the scale of our empty is uh, affecting the effective range of this morphing. So you can scale that up and down. There is another problem that we need to actually realize is that at the end, I think we want this empty to follow this curve or this spline. But this is impossible because we do not have this spline. We are working on a plane. Uh, actually, this even this plane is not being used. It can You can delete this plane and create a cube and it has no effect to our node tree. So in this case, we cannot use a constraint which says the follow path. We have to do a little bit of workaround. In this case, in fact, I'm not going to use this empty because it's just useless in this case if it cannot follow the path. And uh, I'm, instead, I'm going to use this location offset and the scale offset. So here, we firstly need to get the position along this path, uh, which we can use this sample curve node. So if we plug a geometry to curve, actually let's move this down. 
and plug the position into the location offset. So even without our object, we can still use this position to affect it. However, we have no effect. This is because the scale of our fourth is zero. So we need to increase the scale to maybe one or two as you wish. It's just like the scale of our empty. Actually, since we're not using this empty, we can just hide it. This is how it works. And uh, just by playing with this factor, we can actually make this fourth going along with the spline and here I want it to go clockwise instead of counterclockwise so that's the reverse curve the next thing you realize is this factor is clamped at 0 and 1 and even if we type 1.5 it actually not really work beyond 0 and 1 okay so here we are going to use a math function which is called modulo Modulo function I will explain in other tutorial probably, but basically if you have one um, to one uh, to at zero to one hundred, and if your value, if you modulo at ten, and your value goes from zero one to finally go reach nine and ten, it will actually becomes nine and zero, and then restart everything again. So this is how modulo functions. So if you modulo at one and then plug this value into factor. Then you can actually increase this number to infinity because every time you reach one, you will be reset back to zero in the output. So now you can actually just play around this. Um, if you would like to make it more automatic, you can just use the time info node so that you do not need to keyframe anything and uh, instead just play this animation, maybe play 500 frames and you get that. I'm going to slow that down a little bit. So they maybe divide the 55. Then we have this animation. Uh, this is the parametric. Everything is procedural, so you can just change whatever radius or other things as you wish. Or amount of loops, something like that. Yeah, basically this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.